Each of us had a dream to build a functioning aircraft with our own hands. And now, we will show you how to fulfill this dream and launch a plane made out of a box from IKEA, a bottle and some components from AliExpress into the air. To begin with, I tried to visualize my idea on paper. The plane will have a triangular shape and the flaps will be attached to two small servo motors. A plastic bottle in the center of the plane will contain all the electronics and a motor with a propeller at its end will drag the airplane into the sky. I sketched a scheme with the exact dimensions in a special program and brought a technician who should build the plane. And we'll just watch. Come on expert, build us the airplane. Or are you just a sausage eating expert? Alright, looks like we have to do it ourselves. Using a large ruler, trace the outlines of the airplane onto cardboard so that the air cavities inside the cardboard run in the direction of the wingspan. Later, you'll see why that's important. Then, we make cuts along the lines with a sharp stationary knife and take the wing out of the cardboard. It looks great, but we have a small problem. There are some dents that were made at the factory, so that the person could bend the cardboard in this place and thus assemble the box. To fix this, we take these wooden sticks and insert them into the cardboard, thus reinforcing the wings of the airplane and making the entire structure much stronger. Now, we need to outline the future ailerons. These are movable parts of the wing, allowing the plane to turn or gain altitude. We need to remove some cardboard at the edges of the ailerons so that that they can move without touching the wings. After that, we cut the top layer of the cardboard along with the ailerons so that we can slightly bend it. The edges should be dented with a stick so that it can move more smoothly. We ordered these two inexpensive servo motors with a white lever on AliExpress. They rotate slowly, but they are surprisingly powerful for their size. We put the outline of the servo motor on the wing and carefully cut a hole. Make sure that it fits tightly and does not wobble. Now we take these plastic levers, which have to be placed in the ailerons, and fix them on the other side with a special clamp. Now we need a rather thin wire, which should be straightened and its tip should be bent in this way. It allows us to fix it in the servo and the opposite end in the lever clamp. As a result, everything should work like this. Do the same procedure with the other wing and fix the servos with hot glue. The heart of our airplane will be this small, lightweight, but powerful brushless motor. It was delivered with a battery that is meant to power it. Unfortunately, we can't connect the battery directly to the motor. To make everything work properly, we need to connect it via a voltage converter. Another crucial component is a receiver that will receive our commands and transmit them to the motors, each of which will be connected according to the circuit. I almost forgot about the propeller. We ordered a small plastic orange model. I managed to save some money by buying this Chinese remote control for only half its price. The seller said that he only used it once and judging by the amount of dust that settled on it, he was telling the truth. Let's put the batteries in and it seems to be working. After a little adjustment, we've managed to synchronize the sticks of the remote control with the motors and our plane gives the first signs of life. Hopefully the motor will be powerful enough to get the entire structure in the air. Later, I went to the supermarket to get a bottle for the hull. The choice was between a Coca-Cola and a Nasty, but since Cola had a more streamlined shape, I opted for it. On the other hand, the Coca-Cola cap was much smaller, and considering the fact that we had to attach the motor to it, this could have been a problem for us. Nevertheless, we made a few holes in the cap with a drill, put plastic ties through them, and securely attached the motor to the bottle. Next, we need to make a marking on the bottle and cut it all the way so that the wing can fit inside it. 
the transmitter is fixed on the central axis of the cardboard workpiece with a double-sided tape, and the battery is attached right behind it with a rubber band to counterbalance the motor, which will be mounted on the front part of the plane. To power up the aircraft, we plug all the collectors into the transmitter and arrange the components, hiding them inside the bottle. I'm concerned that we will have a lot of crashes during testing, in which the cardboard wings may get damaged, so we reinforce the front part of the wings with duct tape. Now, we screw the cap with the attached motor to the bottle and connect the remaining wires. The Chinese came up with an ingenious method of non-rigid attachment of the propeller to the engine by means of a thick rubber band. During a crash or a collision with trees, the rubber band stretches, allowing the propeller to change its position and thus not break. Stefan asked me to take him on board as a test pilot, but this is very risky, as our airplane will undergo some difficult testing and may even crash. In order not to attract too much attention, we packed our plane into a big black bag and headed out into the wilderness expecting to have at least several successful flights. We're doing a pre-launch check of the servos and the main motor. And launch! Well, that's not what we expected, to say the least. The plane flew two meters, and then some invisible force threw it sideways, making it crash. We couldn't end the video in such a shameful way, so we went back home and made two stabilizers on the wingtips, hoping they would improve the plane. After some more crashes, the propeller broke, and we returned home, where I came up with an idea to lighten the aircraft. The whole structure weighted 180 grams, including 37 grams of the coke bottle. However, we can take a smaller bottle, weighting only 21 grams, divide it into parts and use only half of it. As a result, we lightened the airplane by as much as 22 grams. In addition, I made a cardboard tail, which should help the airplane fly straight. This will be our last attempt. Turn on the motor and launch. Well, this attempt was certainly better than the previous ones. Let's try it one more time. A few more attempts and I finally figured out the main principle of piloting an aircraft, and I was able to keep and even control it in the air. The problem is that if you fly away from yourself and turn to the right, then obviously the airplane will fly to the right. But if I turn around and it flies at you, then turning the stick to the right makes the plane turn to the left from your point of view. By the next day, I had mastered the art of piloting well, and could deliberately do some flips and various stunts in the air. It sounds incredible, but you can fulfill your childhood dream and create your own radio-controlled airplane out of a piece of cardboard, a bottle and components from AliExpress. All that's left is to learn how to land it smoothly. After so many crashes, it looks a little worn out, but we will definitely fix it and make it look brand new again. If you want to build a similar airplane, I will leave the links to all the components in the description.